neutral spine. You hear it in yoga, you hear it in uh, powerlifting and strength training, and you hear it a lot in rehabilitation for the spine. So what exactly does it mean? Well, you have all of these joints along the spine. You may have heard that you have 24 vertebra, and then in between each of those, you've got these tiny little joints right here. I call them the small joints of the back of the spine. Uh, other people call them the facet joints or the facet joints. But the neutral spine is essentially that midway point between all of these little joints. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. So one is if we were to bend all the way backwards like this, we're kind of jamming those joints together, but you could get to kind of the end where, okay, I can't go any more than that. Or if you were to bend forward, collectively all of these joints, if you started to flex them, they would all allow you to bend forward. Another example, you could think of the elbow. Now the elbow is not the spine joint, so the spine joints are a little bit different. But the same idea, a joint, you could fully extend it, I could fully flex it, and then what is this in-between point? And that would be kind of the neutral point. Or to show a yoga example here with the cat-cow, you could see if somebody were to go all the way into cat, which is your fully flexed position, eventually they get to a point where they can't go any further. If we see them go the other direction, the cow or full extension, eventually they would get to a point where they can't go any further here. And then you can see if we found that halfway point, something right in between, that would be considered your neutral spine. Uh, and in yoga, they call this the tabletop. Okay, so why is neutral spine important? Why does it really matter? Well, first, it protects the spine. So there's some evidence to suggest that repetitive flexion of the spine, bending forward too much or spending too much time in flexion creates more forces and pressures on the disc and will slowly, could be one component of slowly uh, degenerating the disc. Um, for some people that might have the opposite tendency, maybe they bend backwards too much or they spend too much time in what's called extension. Maybe they have something called an anterior pelvic tilt. They might have something called a sway back, but for whatever reason, they extended their spine too much or when they lift their weights, let's say for example doing a deadlift and they're lifting and they just kind of uh, go more into extension, that can jam the joints of the spine. So ultimately we kind of want to find that neutral position a lot of the times when we're just doing our daily activities and then especially when we're doing our exercises and workouts. So now let's put the neutral spine into more practical use. Um, how does it relate to core stability and how can you use it to protect your spine? Well, there's something called a co-activation of uh, the, your core or the muscle forces around your spine. So ideally, when we do certain exercises, sometimes we want a co-activation, which means our stomach muscles are engaged and our back muscles and all of the muscles that surround the spine, so these side stomach muscles. And if we can have all of those engaged and tight um, at the same time while we're doing exercises, there is, that is called a brace and it has protective benefits uh, on the spine. So we could relate this to a deadlift. So some people may do their deadlift when they are too rounded, that excessive rounding of the spine. Um, that again puts more forces on the disc and if they're to go up and lift a heavy weight, if it's too heavy with this type of a form, they are more susceptible to injure their back and especially uh, possibly the disc. Now, some other people might know, hey, I'm not supposed to bend my, uh, or round my spine that way. So they may overcorrect or over exaggerate during the exercise, or this just may be their natural tendency. They might be more dominant in their back muscles and they have weaker stomach muscles. And so they might overextend and lift from there. And again, when they lift from here, there's more forces and pressures on those small joints along the spine. But then when they do it under load, meaning when they are lifting weights and they've got those forces, that can really put a lot of compression forces on those small joints at the back of the spine. And so somebody could get injured in this position as well. So when doing, and again, we're just using a deadlift as an example here, but this could go towards different exercises. But in this example here with the deadlift, if we can find the neutral position, so we showed a cat cow earlier, we could do something similar when we're setting up our deadlift uh, in our hip hinge position with our hips back, kind of find that neutral position, and then we could do our lift from that position there.
to give another example using more of a yoga exercise here um, or a rehabilitation exercise, we could do that cat cow again and find our full flexion. We could find our full extension. And then what is that midway point in between that? And then when we bring a leg behind us, such as in the bird dog, there's a tendency to drop into that arched position in the low back. If you can avoid that drop, if you can really tuck your pubic bone up, keep that lifted, keep your spine neutral as you bring that leg behind you, you're gonna get more of that co-activation. Now, another little trick that I like to do with that bird dog is if I shift my hip away from the knee that's down, that, that makes it more challenging, more difficult, and I get more of an activation of all of my core muscles, but especially I start to recruit those side stomach muscles that are neglected in a lot of people. So how can you find a more neutral spine? Well, the cat camel, which we already described is one way, but then another thing I like to do is something called a hip hinge with a dowel rod. So what this is gonna help me do is, is at least maintain somewhat of a neutral position while I move through my hips. And this could be, again, with that um, uh, deadlift example, kettlebell swing, so any exercise where you're gonna be moving through your hips, even your squats sometimes, you might wanna practice something uh, with a dowel rod. So what you would do is take a rod, make sure the back of your head is against it, and then make sure your low back, kind of your sacrum or your belt line, where your belt line would be, you're against there, and somewhere in your mid back. People with a tendency to round their spine are kind of here, so they may have to really work to get that there. Now, some people with the opposite, that anterior pelvic tilt, they may have a lot of space in here. So they may want to just ever so slightly tuck that under. So there's not a specific, here's exactly where, where everybody needs to be. There are some nuances based on what your tendencies are and what your posture type is. But for the most part, if you can have these three points of contact, kind of the belt line, the mid back, and the back of the head, and then you practice moving through that. And again, you could practice your hip hinge, which is your hips back and uh, chest forward. You could practice your squat, which is more butt down and chest would stay up. But those are, that's a nice other way to kind of find that neutral spine and make sure your spine is protected while you're doing some of these exercises. I hope this video helped you out in understanding and maybe finding neutral spine how and why it's important. If this video did help you out, help me out. Either give us the thumbs up uh, on this video or maybe even subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.